It's 10 years, one month, and 25 days since a man employed by Rupert Murdoch coldly, brazenly, without compunction, hacked the phone of an abducted teenage girl. I really wanted to just uh, take those five minutes to stress uh, the positive things. Um, I think, you know, a lot of uh, progress has been made since last July. I think that the first two modules of the Leveson Inquiry have shone a lot of very disinfectant sunlight into a lot of very infected corners. I think that um, as a result, people are around the country starting to realise that this whole thing is about more than just phone hacking, that it is about corruption of police, corruption of public official, officials, uh, the uh, intimidation of elected politicians, and the, basically the emasculation of five successive British governments. So in effect, it's really about the corruption of democracy here in England, the, or Britain, the, the so-called crucible of democracy. Uh, and that however abhorrent the idea of a state-run media is, and it is utterly abhorrent, it's nevertheless increasingly obvious that we have been living for about 30 years in a media-controlled state, and that is equally abhorrent, and it's a disgrace that nothing's been done about it up till now. During the investigation into uh, Steve Whittemore uh, and his prosecution, why was not a single journalist who commissioned this illegal activity ever uh, prosecuted? Why were they never even investigated? Does that mean that despite the, the written law in the, in the Data Protection Act, that journalists are somehow have a, a de facto immunity to prosecution? If, if that's the case, we should be told about it. We should, told, we should be told why that is. Is it uh, they are under-resourced at the Information Commissioner? Are they scared of journalists? Uh, what exactly is going on? Um, <laughs> Given that it was managing editors of newspapers who actually wrote the checks to Steve Whittemore, and in the case of, say, the Daily Mail, uh, put them down in accounts under travel and expenses, why is it that the Leveson Inquiry has not asked a single managing editor to come to the inquiry and uh, explain what happened? Um, and was it the fact that when various newspaper groups lobbied the then Home Secretary Jack Straw very hard to not enact what we, the uh, Information Commissioner suggested, which was much tougher penalties for breaches of Section 55 of the Data Protection Act, including custodial sentences, was the fact that they lobbied Jack Straw very hard and won, he caved in, to do with the fact that A, they'd all been at it, and B, it was an essential part of their business model. I think that's a question that really needs to be asked um, more vociferously than it has been asked. That is a time that all of us have to come together to tell politicians that this isn't enough. They've got to act. Because if we don't, we know that these things can reoccur. And I don't want to be responsible for letting that happen. And I hope that David Cameron doesn't want to be. And I'm pretty certain that Nick Clegg and Ed Miliband definitely don't want to be. And this campaign is going to be central to keeping a focused, a focused message to every politician in the land that now is the time to act. So that is my message tonight. You are the start of a movement that we have to build in the country to make sure that once and for all we get proper and comprehensive media reform so that we can never ever again see the parents of a murdered school child go through what they've had to go through. Thank you.